Let's try that again. Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Wow, you guys have some nasty breath. I don't know what you had for breakfast here, <laughs> but I'm going to get close to you anyway. All right. I am excited. Do you know why I'm excited? Why? Because I get to talk about it. Jesus, and I love Jesus, and you should too, and I'm going to try to explain why. All right, but I need something this morning. What do I normally need? I always ask for something. What do I ask for? Money. A volunteer. Come on up. Hey, come on up. I need two today this time. All right, what's your name? Anna. You were volunteer before, weren't you? You what? All right, I'm, you know, my brain, I'm, it's, it's getting smaller. That's what's happened. Okay, Hannah, would you sit, stand over here, please? And what's your name? Contessa. Oh, yeah, I knew you. All right, Contessa and Hannah. Hannah, you are going to hold this and not let go. And you are going to hold this and not let go. And Contessa is going to represent something. Yeah. See, part of doing magic tricks is things represent stuff. You are going to represent me and you and your parents and your grandparents and all of you and everybody. You're going to represent all of the human race. How about that? Is that? That's pretty good. That's a lot for one, Contessa. Don't you think? Do you guys need coffee today? Okay. Hannah, if Contessa represents the whole human race, you're going to represent God. Did you get for that? All right. Well, it's, okay. it's cool. Don't worry about it. It's right. fine. Okay. It's not blasphemous. We're just representing. You're not really God, okay? So here's the thing. This is how the world started with God and humans in perfect fellowship. Sometimes we call this fellowship. Now, look, there's a perfect line in between. We are, there's nothing in the way. We have great fellowship. We're connected. This line like, is like, it's like our relationship with God. It's perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. We're connected to one another. That's the way that we want to be. But we've been talking about something over the last couple of weeks. We've learned about who God is, how he's invisible. Hannah's not invisible. Just representing God isn't really God. God is invisible and how we can't know him unless someone teaches us about him through the Bible. Remember we had those windmills, you couldn't solve them unless someone showed you the way. And we learned about uh, how God has eternal life for us. And we need it because we have these traps on us. Remember those bear traps that we talked about? What does bear trap represent? Three little words. Someone yell it out. Sin. S-I-N. What does sin stand for? Sticky inner nastiness. That's right. That's, and, and sin is a big problem because it takes this, this, this perfect fellowship that we have. I want to read something from God's Word. Check this out. This is Ephesians chapter 2. And it says, remember that you, 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 all of you parents, everybody, you, were at one time separated from Christ. That's what sin does. It separates you from Christ. Alienated. Alienated means that you're separated. See, it's like saying the same thing over and over again. So people might think and understand it. We are separated. Alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. Strangers to the covenants of promise. Having no hope and without God in the world. Wow. How about that? Having no hope. Separated from God. Alienated. This is not good. But this is what sin does. I need another volunteer. Come on up. What's your name? Sophia, you're going to demonstrate what sin does. Here, take those. Don't run with them. Okay. okay I'm going to let go of this for just a sec. This for just a sec. So this is this represents like a perfect harmony with God, right? A perfect relationship with God. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the middle of it, and Sophie is going to demonstrate what sin does. You cut that thing right in half, make two ropes out of it. Chop, 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 chop. I'm going to pack it. I'm going to pack it. That's the best. Big little jobs in it. They don't have to do that, bro. <laughs> if you pull on them, there we go. Hey, there we go. You did it. How about a round of applause, Sophie? Great job. You represented what sin does. Sin separates us from God. And what we do is, so it, it takes our perfect fellowship and ruins it. And what we try to do is we try to, you know, we try to fix it temporarily. Like, well, maybe we can, you know, we can make it better. And we, you know, now we've got a knot. And this knot represents separation. So here you go, God. Hold on to that. But don't pull it too hard, because now it's too gross, and it'll, it'll rip. And here you go. Pull that. Just hold it tight. Don't, don't yank on it, because it'll come off. Um, and so here it is. It's a, it's a thought, well, what's wrong with our fellowship? There's something in the way. It's it. And here's what human beings try to do. We try to make it better. Like, I know what to do. Well, I'll, I'll go to church every week. And I'll, uh, 
I'll, 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 I'll give money to the poor, and I'll, I'll memorize my Bible verses, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, be baptized. And, or maybe I'll, I'll try other religions, too. I'll try to you know, pray to Mecca, you know, become a Muslim, or I'll become a, you know, try to do nice things to people, or I'll try to give money to the poor. And I'm going to try to cut away from my... It doesn't work. Did it work? No, that, that knot is still there. That, that is, it, we're still separated. Our fellowship with God is broken. I'm going to keep reading what it says in, in Ephesians 2. We had no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, who you were once far away, had been brought near by the blood of Christ. That's the difference. Last week I told you about eternal life. I told you that I would teach you this week about how we get to eternal life. We get it through this. Oh, my bookmark stuck to it. This is the blood of Christ. Well, it's not really. It just represents the blood of Christ, right? So the blood of Christ covers our sin. And then, what we could never do ourselves, the blood of Christ can do. I'm going to read to you. It says, we who are once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace. He's made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. God has the hostility that, that, that what's in between us and God. God has, has gotten rid of it by the blood of Christ. So what we could never do, the blood of Christ can do. Here's what I need to do, Hannah, God, Contessa, just you know, let go for just a second. I want you to wrap the human race around your hand. Just wrap the human race around your hand. There you go. Wrap the human race around your hand. Wrap the human race. There you go. And because we tried to get rid of that hostility on our own, and we couldn't do it. And what can do it? What is, what's going to wash away our sins? The blood of Christ. Everybody say, the blood of Christ. No, say, oh, the blood of Christ. What do we need to have our sins forgiven? And here's what happens. The American Tessa represents the world. What we, what we could never do, what we were helpless to do, God did through the blood of Christ. Hold on nice and slowly. Look what God did. What did God do? He brought us back into perfect fellowship. What we could never do, He did. He got rid of that hostility. He broke down the wall through what? The blood of Christ. Now, here's the thing. You guys are smart. I know you can understand this. If, if there is life inside of you, if you are thinking straight at all, if the snow hasn't dampened your soul, you are thinking, Mom, how do I get this blood of Christ? I now see that that eternal life that I need, I need eternal life. I don't need an iPad. I don't need a car. I don't need a boyfriend. Or I don't, what I need is the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ is what brings us back to God. How do I get that blood of Christ? Guys, I'm going to meet with you one more time next week. And it will be my honor and pleasure to share with you how to get the blood of Christ around your heart. So that when God sees you, he sees that blood, and he will pass over your sins. There's nothing more important than that. Please, this week, while you're out, and while you're in, and while you're sitting in your bed, and while you're out doing school, I want you to think, I need the blood of Christ. How do I get that? Come back next week. It'll be my pleasure to tell you. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the blood of Christ. It is precious, it is awesome, it is wonderful, and we need it. It brings fellowship between God and man. It, 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 it fixes what we ruin through our sin. Thank you, God, for the blood of Christ. I want everybody here to know the blood of Christ that they are washed in the blood of Christ, but I want them to be washed in the blood of Christ. So I look forward to sharing the good news next week. I praise you, God, for what you do. I praise you, God, for who you are. I thank you for all of the young ladies here. I know that you can use them in amazing ways. We thank you, God. Please keep them safe as they play basketball and as they go about their lives this week. Look forward to seeing them next Saturday morning where we can share with them how to get the blood of Christ in their life. Thank you, praise you, in Jesus' name. Amen. How about a round of applause for Contessa and Hannah? You did a very good uh, human race of God. And now I give it over to Pastor Elliot.